So, hello guys and welcome to this new video. Today I'm here to present something very exciting, again, very, very late. Kind of depends on your definition of time, what day you want to consider this, but um, for me, it's the 24th, because that's when I woke up today. So, I just did this is my video from Christmas Eve, yay! Um, Merry Christmas everyone, if you guys have celebrated today. Uh, you could view this as a present, I guess. <laughs> We're gonna, uh, today we're gonna talk about stable chunk loading, which is a uh, subject I quite like because in, at least in parts, it actually works out fairly well. Uh, better than I thought it would have. Uh, I was a bit optimistic going into this and it turned out that my optimism paid off because what I hoped would work actually worked for a part, but I won't get into too many of the complications today. Uh, I'm also gonna release a second part tomorrow. I hope to get some more research done, done by then. And then I can maybe form a better conclusions about things. But I want to split up this D up into two parts, uh, at least, maybe even three later on, we'll see. First, because I like to release many videos, get back on my schedule, haha. <laughs> Screw you guys. Um, secondly, because, well, I just think it's a, it's a decent subject and I think it deserves multiple videos, especially because I want to give myself a bit more time to research this, because I'm really releasing a lot of this as I'm researching it. This setup was built last Sunday, but for example, that sand, I, stuff I put there today to do some extra tests with. Um, so yeah, we're doing a lot of stuff every, in real time here as I'm discussing it. So I'm doing a lot of research um, during the day and then recording video about it at night and that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's basically how it's going lately. And I think it also, I think I'm doing enough research to basically make videos about it. I don't think I'm just milking easy, I, make, I don't think I'm making videos of very little work here, this is like summarizing hours and hours of research still. And I hope I will be able to save those hours from other people. With all that being said, let's get into stable chunk loading. The goal is simply, in this stage, um, to permanently load a command block clock, a fill clock using a setup command uh, in a chunk which is not, uh, which is artificially lo loaded. So not by a player, not by the spawn chunks, just using what normally would be like resin loaders and stuff. Um, so right in this chunk over here, we got this one, which increases uh, perm loading test one, uh, as long as it's loaded. So as you can tell, as I pass the binary here, it stops being loaded and it stops running. Uh, however, I have managed to find a way to keep it loaded 900 ticks out of 900 in between other saves. So it kind of works like this. Um, Need to give it a bit of time to warm up, but after a while it should work. So basically, if you look at the first two numbers here, this one increases nine by nine hundred every time, uh, and this one also increases by nine hundred every time. The top one here. Don't look at the other ones. Uh, so what is this? Uh, well, over there we have a absolute auto save detector. I will link to the video about that. I made it in like August, but it's still a very useful machine for this kind of technology related to chunk loading and such. And now, yeah, it's made a false signal. Basically what we have, we take that, we delay the signal by 44.8 seconds, if you count all the repeaters together. And then at that point, we send it through an instant repeater line. And what if we do in the chunk we want to load is we make sure that there's a repeater. Uh, it may also work in this chunk itself, but what I uh, usually do, uh, I think, you know, actually, actually, I'm pretty sure it needs to be in this chunk. Yeah, I tested that. Um, so what I normally do is I put it, a repeater in a chunk which is already loaded at that point, and I, it has to be triggered at that point. Now you can be like, well, why don't you just uh, put the repeater over there? Then you just have the instant repeater line, uh, and that loads everything, right? Also, instant repeater is made by Deco and Sydney. I'm not sure if I should still mention the design. I'll, I'll reference it this time, I guess, but I probably won't do it forever. Um, now, that's a nice idea, but unfortunately it doesn't work in reality. I think it's probably because impedes your style ticks. Um, I've noticed that both the... I'm not sure if the uh, both the uh, on off, go going on off, of course, works for the loading, uh, but I always use the, going, uh, the uh, rising edge to do the loading properly. So, this what seems to be happening is that the uh, thing is unloads and at least within a tick before the command block clock is executed again or at least basically before it would be executed again it's loaded again because this repeater uh, goes on so i think that's something to do with it being a tile tick which is processed differently compared to normal redstone updates which you would have with your normal repeater instant repeater line 
either way, it works with repeaters. I'm fairly happy about it. It does mean that, of course, you run into trouble once you hit the data limit, but that means you are artificially loading over a thousand chunks. So, yeah, I can live with that limit personally. Uh, you may run into memory issues at that point, although I'm not entirely sure. So, right now we have that. Um, that's our setup, and I maybe, maybe I should quickly show it again that it does indeed work and that it does indeed. Every nano addiction spawn, also, we also have 900 ticks in our perm loading test one chunk. So that's really nice, I would say. Uh, now, I made, as you see, we also have three other variables right here. And those are for chunks behind uh, this one. Uh, and I quickly want to get into this. This is what I call chaining. Basically, this chunk loads this one. Uh, sorry, this repeater loads this chunk, and this repeater loads this chunk, and so on. And the chain really matters. Also, in here I just did a quick test. Uh, you don't need the repeater itself, but um, you know I'll get into that in a second. I just quickly want to cover the idea of chaining. Um, so we're just gonna let it run for a bit until it's stable again. And I think it should be fine probably. Okay, yeah, now the signals are coming in at the right time. As you can tell, all of them are in fact increasing by 900 every tick. And not skimming a single tick, so that's great. Um, now you saw the last one was a bit irregular compared to the other ones. Well, that's because I've noticed that you don't actually need the repeater itself to be next to a chunk. It basically needs to power something. Um, basically, you can use anything as powers as well uh, to load chunks. So you can also load this chunk instantly um, using a repeater over here to use to load this chunk instantly. So that way, uh, I I think it's... Oh no, I quickly want to show something about the chaining. It is actually important that you load the chunk in between as well instantly, else this thing will not work instantly, apparently. So I'll quickly demonstrate that right now. So if we go over here, uh, we have to wait until the thing is stable again, because we mess with the absolute autosave detector, of course. Um, I think it should be stable right, right now. So yeah, the first one is working fine. Second one isn't working fine as you would expect because it's being loaded by the Redstone update uh, of the repeater line, which is uh, instant repeater line, which is not properly functioning. Uh, and then be after that, you see again it's not working properly, and that is because the chain is not complete. So just to prove right there, you do need a complete chain, or at least that's what it seems to me. I th these are the kind of tests I do. I just I'm just trying to summarize test results in these video videos. Now what I will show you next is how you can quickly fairly easily basically make a five wide loader. So what do we do here? Well, we simply load. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to show a better one in a future video, probably. But um, right here, we just use three repeaters to load five chunks. You can actually do a similar thing with two, but uh, I'll get into that in another video. Um, so that's pretty nice. Doesn't cost too many tile ticks. Um, in fact, so you can go over the 1,000 chunk limit. You can go higher than that. So basically all these repeaters uh, will go on in the exact same tick and then load all these five chunks over here. And why do we need that? Well, if those five chunks are active, then only then the this one will be an anti-processing chunk and that kind of stuff. So let's quickly run a test here. We don't just want to test it with the command blocks, well, we actually are doing this, or I right now am doing this for Santec. If you're not doing this for Santec, well, you probably don't care about this part, but I'm still going to show it. Um, so let's turn this lever off, and we're going to turn this clock on right after I turn my block sound off. Because <laughs> it's going to be laggy. Uh, it's uh, noisy again. So as you can tell, uh, sand just falls into position. It triggers a command block which basically clears the sand, and also one which prints this message. Uh, I will not escape. To sh like I won't show the commands because then I mess with the absolute auto save detector again. But as you can tell, it's working fine. Sand is coming in every three ticks. So that's great. Um, now, up here we have a system with rip, uh, torches. Basically, if this chunk is not is a lazy chunk, then the sand will fall instantly onto the torch, and a similar thing will happen on a higher level, and then we it will give it a different message. So I can quickly show that. If we go into this chunk, it starts printing different messages because in fact the sand you can see it's falling instantly. Actually, there are some visual glitches with falling sand because uh, this is client sites. The client isn't properly rendering everything, but. Uh, as you can tell, it just uh, loads the chunks again, and that's why it's working like this now. But um, something I can show right now is that even over the autosave, you can see never was the sand 
land instantly. In fact, you can see it's 37, 40, 43, 46, 49, 52, 55, 80, and so on and so forth. It's working fine across the auto safe. So that's really nice. Um, so yeah, basically, the this machine does not seem to be affected by it. So this machine also seems to be permanently lo loaded. Now, to you guys, this probably seems like a fairly obvious thing, but I have been having problems with other mach Santac machines, which did seem to not be say permanently loaded, even though I, I thought the chunk is being permanently loaded. Uh, but I will get into that in future videos. Now, as for today, I th think I'm going to wrap this up. Um, this is the main test setup, test setup I wanted to show to you guys. Um, so, permanently loaded chunks, it's possible, at least for command blocks, probably also for sand. However, there's more to look into, uh, because what if we don't want to load 5 chunks, but 500 chunks? To you, that probably sounds like the same, you just expand the mechanism, but guess what? Minecraft didn't think so, and I will get into that tomorrow, probably. So, I hope you find this video interesting, uh, even though it's a bit long. Uh, tomorrow, again, will be a bit long, probably, but... Oh well. Hope you liked the video. Even if you didn't, please leave a rating. I'd like to know what you guys think about this cool stuff. Yeah, I do think it's cool this time. And I hope I will see you in another video.